Hey everyone, Thaw Steve here with First Up This Now, checking out 9994 washed up a senior, group of seniors, 2023 class graduates. Congratulations to all you guys here at TRI. We're going to be looking at their robot. It's a RI3D collab with a bunch of other teams. Really excited to walk through their robot, made, made a bunch of uh, upgrades and it's inspired by 6672 Fusion Corp. So I'm really excited to walk through them. We have Luke from Valor, Keon from Barbecue, Abhishek from Torque, uh, Akash from Vector, as well as Kardik from Kryptonite. Really excited to go through them right here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com slash sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. All right, let's get started with talking about your RI3D and collab. We're gonna hand it off to you, Arkash. Tell me more about this RI3D system, how has it been going on with you guys, and what has been going so far this summer? Yeah, so our name kind of says it perfectly. We're a bunch of washed up seniors, and uh, we decided to make a robot in less than 24 hours to compete at TRI. So it was RI across three days, but it was R in one day because we spent less than 24 hours on this bot. So um, we also worked at a variety of build spaces. We kind of decided to pool all our resources, come together and make a robot. So we worked at Kryptonite's lab, the RSC for a while. We worked at Torx lab, we worked in Kartik's garage. Um, we worked across a variety of places and with lots of team members. We have Barbecue, Torque, who do you have on our team? Barbecue, Torque, Appreciate, Vector, Valor, Valor Steel Talons, all represented on Washed Up. So that's kind of the general atmosphere of collaboration here. We also have, uh, everyone has their own contribution to the robot. Right here we have a Torque's designer, added some pink tape to the sides of the robot. We have um, Barbecue's lead designer, he added four rivets to hold the entire belly pan in place. And uh, really, really cool things like that. All right, really love the collaboration between all the teams here. Now let's hand it off to Luke and talk about your chassis that you've done and some differences between Fusion Corp as well. Yeah, so uh, basically the main difference between Fusion Corp and our chassis is that we have the SDS L4 uh, swerve modules. And uh, we, we did like a lot of math at the start of the year to try and figure out what the perfect chassis weight would be so that the L4s would actually work at like their peak performance. Uh, and so we ended up coming up with an overall robot weight of 80, everything included like battery bumpers. Um, and so that just allows us to really get around quick everywhere on the field. Um, and I mean, other than that, uh, I mean, obviously you see a lot of similarities with Fusion Core. Our intake is a little different. Uh, they're gonna talk about that later, um, but yeah. Love the, the speed that you guys have with the L4s. Now let's hand off to Keon, talk about the arm, of course, similar to Fusion Core, but explain any differences. Yeah, so going into this, we knew that we were gonna be pretty much as fast as we could get. So we decided that we were gonna try to keep the CG as low as possible. Uh, we actually worked with Fusion Core's lead designers and design team. Uh, they let us know there were some issues that they saw, uh, some failures they even saw in Einstein. And so, one of the major things we change is just how the motors are packaged overall. Um, right here, instead of running our wrist gear up here, keeping our CG pretty high, we actually opted to go for a dead center gear with a motor that orbits around it. So whenever the wrist moves, the motor will go along with it. Uh, we initially saw some backlash issues with that, but they were pretty easy to fix. Um, outside of that, the whole, the whole arm, because we knew it would have to be assembled in like robot in three days, it's powered entirely by Rev Ion. Um, everything that we did here is pretty much cut on a bandsaw and tap it and it's good to go. Love that, especially having everything in just with one ecosystem of the Rev Ion. Really impressive. Now, Abhishek, talk to me about the intake and any differences from there. Sure. So as we know, every arm needs a buddy and that buddy is the intake. This intake is pretty much uh, the intake that was used by Fusion Core in season. We worked with their designers on how to build it. Now the funny thing is the real intake is completely different than it is in CAD because when we designed it we uh, you know we had these ideas to use all these wheels and gears and when we actually went up to build it we didn't have anything so we pretty much scavenged a bunch, scavenged a bunch of parts from Torque's lab. Uh, this motor was used on a Torque elevator prototype we just pulled it off of that. Uh, these gears we just found them lying around this, we went upstairs at Torx Lab and uh, found that. So, And it happens to work really well. It can intake cones off of the ground and from the single substation uh, and, and cubes from both of them. It's, uh, it's 
really good, and it's pretty lightweight and uh, doesn't make us tip when we're scoring. Anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. Another thing. So the center to center distances were pretty much all, I'd like to call it DIY, because in CAD they were actually real, and in real life we didn't have any of the belts and gears and sprockets and anything. So, uh, yeah, uh, lead designer of Torque DIY to all of them. So. All right, now can you walk? Can you guys walk me through the, the mechanisms and everything? I'm going to hand it off to you, Card. Talk me about your programming as well as all the mechanisms, uh, movement, and, and within control and gameplay. So here we're going to pick up a ground cube uh, from the intake set point. So it's a little bit different than the cone intake, so it's going to go over. And then this is like the in bot position, how we're transporting it from the single substation or like just on the floor to the scoring area. So here we're just going to score it on high. Um, so it, it, it does the arm movement first to make sure that the wrist is not going to hit the chassis while coming back in or going, going out. But while coming back in, we move the uh, arm and wrist in parallel. So essentially how we're doing this is we have uh, um, absolute encoders on both the wrist uh, and, um, the, and the arm. So here we're going to do uh, intake for the ground intake for the cone. So it's a little lower so we can slide it. <laughs> And they're perfectly in, now it's inside. And then we can go to mid set point for the cone here. So just a wrist change. So essentially how this works is with the absolute encoders, you have the position uh, no matter where you store it for the arm. But for the uh, wrist, we have, uh, we're using the rev one. So we start this up at this configuration. And then we're using trapezoidal profiling for to have a smooth um, uh, arc and a transition between the velocities so it doesn't stop on a dime and then tips the bot since we're so lightweight and then uh, Let's get this baby bird uh, the single substation set point here So here we drop it straight in and it's really quick for the driver and we can uh, outtake it again on mid or mid cone here um, But yeah here uh, I programmed this in my garage because we didn't have time at the workspace so it was interesting to find uh, tuning the PIDs, getting all the set points, figuring out that we needed an idle speed. And at the end, it, it was all working and we just kept tuning. For Autons, we were just running like a simple one uh, just to, because we focused more on the teleop side uh, and the scoring and set points. So, yeah. Well, washed up seniors, first of all, congratulations on all your, and on, congratulations on everything you guys have done and good luck on your future endeavors. The tide is really coming in for you guys and really excited on how you guys continue the rest at TRI and hope you guys are the best so far. Uh, so given that it was a robot in three days, there was a lot of resources, a lot of time that came in perfectly from the First in Texas community. Uh, this could not be done without anyone there. Uh, we would like to give a special thank you to Spectrum for allowing us one chance to kind of have fun and play. Uh, Kryptonite, CavBots, and Texas Torque for giving us a build space when we, uh, we asked kind of last minute, so they really came in, they showed their community spirit and how much that FIT community can really come together. Uh, we would like to thank Valor, Appreciate, Barbecue, and Kryptonite, and Vector for providing us parts as well. Uh, Texas Torque was super huge and pivotal in the way that we were allowed to build a robot, and it really could not have been done without a single team helping us out. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.